they say 20% mm -hmm. is left motor dominant. I find in clinic it's less. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that people with left motor dominance get less issues. I don't know. Or maybe they're a little bit more ambidextrous. But the typical pattern we see is the right motor dominance. The right ilium gets pulled forward. And as a result, the sacrum kind of at this corner follows the ilium. So this top right corner goes deep and this left corner comes back and becomes prominent. Mm -hmm. A backward sacral torsion is different. It's where one of the bottom corners goes in. Mm -hmm. So it's not really the normal pattern. So if we have this kind of same left axis, if we like, as opposed to a right axis, because we're referencing from the high side. Mm -hmm. So in this left axis, a posterior or backward sacral torsion will mean the bottom corner goes deep like that. Mm -hmm. So this is harder to spot in some ways, but if we check the sacral sulcus, mm -hmm. it'll be quite deep on one side and shallow on the dysfunctional side. Yeah, so that's the difference. In a sacral torsion, it's the top that goes forward and the whole thing kind of rotates around this axis. So it's oftentimes referred to as left axis and left rotation because the front side, because remember we're looking from the back here, mm -hmm. this would be where the spinous processes would be in the spine. So this anterior view, it follows like that. And then as a result, it's kind of tipping that way, turning to the left. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So that's torsion versus backward torsion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think that kind of illustrates it pretty well. This line, the, the reason it goes through this kind of oblique access like this is because of the shape of the SI joint. It's almost like a, an eight or an infinity symbol, but kind of slightly bent. So they're not lined up. There's two different loops and that gives us two different points or axis, two different lines of rotation. 